Hi, everybody. I'm Jim Heath. For over 40 years, he has been a dominant force in Ohio politics, mayor of the state's largest city, governor of Ohio, U.S. senator, and now private citizen. Today, our guest on Capitol Square is George Voinovich, mayor, governor, senator. Good to see you. Good to see you. Don't forget, county right. commissioner, county auditor. <laughs> And All lieutenant right. governor. All right. <laughs> we'll add those later. We'll add those in. Hey, I want to show you. You said you hadn't seen this, but I want to show our viewers here, if we can. This is a, a headline that ran uh, recently in the Columbus Dispatch uh, newspaper, Mr. Ohio. And it's a big article, and here you are on the front. So let me just ask you, um, is it difficult to kind of let go, uh, to step out of the political arena after four decades of having these very important positions? Well, in, in effect, uh, <laughs> I've said to my folks, we're winding up, not winding down. And as you know, we're very, very busy. But between lots of people saying goodbye to me in organizations in Washington and here in Ohio, uh, I've been very, very busy in, in, uh, in Washington. And then, as you can imagine, I've accumulated a lot of stuff in 40 right. years. And I've said it's harder to get out of town than get into the town. <laughs> So I'm fortunate Ohio University has the Voinovich School. They're going to be taking a lot of my memorabilia. They're taking all of my papers, and they're going to archive it for, for me. And um, so it's, you know, and then get, getting out of the apartment, and uh, on the 28th I'll be there to, for the movers to come. So it's, and our house is going to look like it's a warehouse for right. a while. <laughs> right. So it's, it's kind of a stressful period. You know, <laughs> growing up, I was born in Ohio, but I grew up in uh, Phoenix, uh, in Arizona. And I remember when uh, Barry Goldwater came home. And it was a very similar situation. He had a big office there, and it accumulated a whole lot of things. And uh, it was sort of a walk down memory lane. I remember him being interviewed and talking about, uh, as they packed things away, just how many memories that it brought back. I mean, it must be interesting to look back and, and see so many, a collection of things, because you don't typically do do that month to month or even year to year. It's events like well, what these. We, I'll tell you what we've done. We, we, uh, they made lookbooks for us. And so my kids looked at the lookbooks to see if there were things that they wanted. And the mm -hmm. um, Republican Party has the George and Janet Voinovich Republican Center. And they wanted some, some of the stuff. Uh, Ohio U wants some of the stuff. Cleveland State University wants some of the stuff. So, but. Uh, you're right. It's it's how do you get it out, and then you look back on it. The thing that's this year that's been very very uh, heartwarming to me is a lot of organizations, maybe it's just because it's my last year, have recognized me for things that frankly I've forgotten I've done. <laughs> I, I mean, I just uh, one of the nicest was uh, the uh, National Head Start organization honored me with Chris Dot for all that I've done for children in early childhood education, our Help Me Grow program in Ohio. And you know, you just you just go down the road, and then it was there were women there from Ohio uh, that that were like gave testimonies. Mm -hmm. And I remember you, you know, governor, when you were here or where you were there, and and what you did. It's 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 really you know you wonder if people pay attention to what you're doing, and you know something they do. Mm -hmm. When you uh, and I know we we added a, a lot more titles to the plate there at the beginning, but of <laughs> of what I think a lot of people would view as the big three: uh, Cleveland mayor. Uh, governor and U.S. Senator. When you look at those three, does one stand out? I mean, as you look back, which one kind of jumps out and you're like, wow, I enjoyed that one maybe better than the others and I feel like I made uh, a more uh, significant contribution uh, to the public? Well, there's no question I enjoyed being governor and mayor than I did in the United States Senate. I mean, after all, I was the orchestra leader and uh, mm -hmm. I set the agenda. And in the Senate, you're one of 100. And quite frankly, I never did uh, intend to, uh, to go for leadership. It's the first time in my life that I didn't strive to be a leader. Uh, you know this or not, I was president of the National League of Cities and chairman of the National Governors. No one's ever had both those offices. So I ordinarily go for the leadership spot. I came to the Senate with the idea that I was going to be in the orchestra and try to become first chair in a couple of sections and make my contribution uh, that way. And uh, it's been more frustrating, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I again have been really pleased, uh, you know, with with some of the things that uh, folks have recognized me for. For example, we've done more with Dana Kaka, uh, Senator Kaka, on human capital and reforming the federal civil service than, you know, since 1975. Uh, I've been very active. A lot of people aren't even aware of this. And NATO expansion. I was the only senator in 
in 2002 to be at the Prague Summit when we, we brought in seven new countries in the NATO. I've been very involved in the visa waiver program so that a lot of these countries that used to not have waiver, visa waivers now have them. I've been very involved in, in uh, re bringing the issue of anti-Semitism to the Organization for Cooperation in, in, in Europe and also to the State Department. Um, and then very much involved in, uh, in through the Environment and Public Works Committee in the whole issue of cap and trade and our energy issues and so forth. So. Uh, the so things the legislature I've, has been satisfying that. I mean, it, it, it's been that. satisfying, but you know, it's 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 a grind. It's, and, mm -hmm. and and the thing that's that's disturbing to me a, a bit is that we waste so much time. We were just talking about that earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, all these we go, you go there for, for days and, and no votes. And then you come up to the end right now, and, and <laughs> right. it's like you know a, the big onslaught is you take care of the tax thing, you take care of uh, 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 how do you how do you ref, how do you fund the government for the next uh, year or the next several, uh, the New Start Treaty, which has been around for almost a year, and we're finally getting onto it. Then you got the Dream Act, uh, uh, no fault, or was it no whatever it is, right? Uh, and and. Uh, so they all just it all gets jammed up at, at, there at the at, very yeah. end. And, and the thing that's different really is I, I'll never forget Pete Wilson uh, was a good friend of mine and I asked Pete one day uh, we're both governors I said Pete which job did you like better he said governor by far and I said to him why he said because I control my schedule mm. <laughs> and I didn't understand it right but the beat I don't I still don't know what's going on this weekend I call my office they're not certain and you know something I'm not sure if the leaders are certain what we're doing right and and but, but the clock is ticking it is say. yeah hey when the dispatch called you mr. Ohio a couple interesting stats that we want to put up on the screen here uh, about your success politically here in the Buckeye State first back in 1994 72% of the vote largest win of any Ohio governor um, and then in 2004 you received three and a half million votes. That's the largest number of raw votes of any Senate candidate in Ohio's history. I mean, when you look at that, you've had quite a strong rapport with the people of Ohio through a number of years, and even through some controversial decisions. Uh, when you look back on your time as governor, there were spending cuts, drastic spending cuts, along with some tax increases, and yet this uh, sustained popularity. Uh, have, have you been introspective? Have you figured out what that was, your rapport with uh, your fellow Ohioans here that helped you out campaign after campaign? Uh, yeah, I have. And uh, as I said in my farewell uh, speech on the floor of the Senate this week, that uh, the people of Ohio have stuck with me through thick and thin, uh, even though there are cases where they didn't agree with what I did. And I think the reason why they have is they know that when I make decisions, I do them based on what I think is in the best interest of the people of Ohio and in the Senate, the best interest of the people of the country. And I let my conscience have a lot to do with my voting. And uh, I think that's what people want. I mean, I, I know that some of the things I have done are not popular, but I would rather have people's respect than I would their popularity. Mm -hmm. And I think that's... Um, that's, that's really what I've tried to do. I've, I've taken on some very controversial things. Uh, you know, in 1998, uh, when I ran for the Senate, uh, I supported an increase in the sales tax for higher education and secondary education, and, and it got bombed in May, 80%, and everybody beat up on me. But I think I, I just went to the voters and I said, I think you guys got to decide. Here's my opinion about it. So mm -hmm. I think that. Uh, and that's my advice to a lot of young people today that are in government. Do what you think is right. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing about it is that you can always then look at yourself. You know, it's my mother who used to say, to thy own self be true. You look in the mirror and say, look, I did what I thought was right. Now, maybe, maybe you might even you know, lose office or something, but at least you have the satisfaction of, of, of doing that. Senator, we just have a couple minutes before yeah. our first break here, um, but let, let me ask you, the state faces an $8 billion uh, budget shortfall next year, so I'm, I'm going to ask you to kind of weigh in, um, but let me ask you just honestly, based on your experience, can you cut enough, can you find $8 billion in spending cuts, or should a tax increase of some sort be on the table to help rectify that deficit and shortfall? I think at this stage of the game, it's going to take both. Anybody, you know, I, I, eight billion dollars. A lot of it is that you know the one-time revenue that came through with the stimulus package, and uh, you know when I came in, I had a billion and a half dollar debt to take care of in '92, mm -hmm. and it was tough for two years. 
it was very, very tough. But what we did was we cut the budget four times and finally got down to the bone. And I went to Vern Reif and I went to um, Stan Aronoff and I said, you guys know, they didn't want me, they didn't help me. I had to do it. I said, we got a problem here. <laughs> and I finally went to them and said, I've proven to you I'll make the cuts. It was very tough. It took a lot of heat. And I said, now you decide. I'll continue to do it, but I think we're at the point where we don't want to do this because I don't think it's in the best interest of the people of Ohio for education, for, for human welfare, for health care, and so on and so forth. And we sat down and spent three weeks and came up with a package uh, where we raised taxes um, at the margins in the state and uh, balanced our budget and the economy got better. And uh, by the time I finished, we had three reductions in the state income tax. Uh, and I call it the good management, uh, 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 good economy bonus. It was one of those deals where I said to the legislature, you can either spend this money or we can give it back to the people. And that's what we did. We gave it back to the people. So there was, so we, well, while we had good days, and then I built up the rainy day front over a right. billion dollars and put a hundred million dollars aside uh, for Medicaid. So we prepared for the future and then said to the voters, but we had to go through the first part of that and that was what I call short-term pain for long-term gain. And that's the problem today. Nobody wants to take the short-term pain to get the long-term gain. We have to take a break, but the new governor says absolutely, positively no tax increases. Doable? I don't think it is. All right. Uh, on that note, let's take a break. Uh, we'll come back with our newsmaker, uh, Senator.